This is just a PSA from future me. Um, in this video, I will be doing some readings that are a little bit more personal. Um, and whilst I am sharing them with you, and I'm always happy to hear your feedback about the video and your own thoughts on this deck, I want to make it clear that I'm not asking for your interpretations of the readings that I've done. I very much believe that whatever cards I need um, to come up in order to give me the right message, will come up. Um, so in a way, it's almost like the cards that come up in these readings are specific to me, um, not only to my situation and answering my question, but to me and how I understand the cards in answering my question. So I have been a little bit vulnerable and emotional in this video and sharing some more personal readings that I've done with you. Uh, please just respect this boundary. I'm not looking for um, help in uh, like understanding the readings that I did or any alternative messages. Thank you so much in advance for respecting that. Now, I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Flowers and today we are doing another video in the Keep or Cull series. Basically, I'm a gal with a lot of tarot decks and oracle decks and I want to reduce my collection size. I don't have a particular number in mind or anything, I just want to be really sure that all of the decks that I have are decks that I love and that I want to use. And for the last year or so I haven't really felt that way. So this series has come to the rescue and in it I pick a deck to work with for a sort of intensive period of a couple of weeks. I vlogged that experience and share it with you and at the end of the video I decide whether I'm going to keep that deck or not. So it's sort of like a reading vlog but for tarot. So I will share with you some readings that I do, I'll take you through some of my ideas for the meanings of the cards, I'll show you some of the cards, show you the little white book. It sort of serves as a live action review or at least that's what I'm going for uh, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. This time we're going to be working with the Fountain Tarot, which I feel like is kind of a bit of a modern classic in the tarot world. This is a deck I've had for a long time. I've had it for years, I've done a review on it, I've spoken about it a lot, especially a few years ago. I did a lot of readings for myself, I did a lot of readings for clients and for other people as well. This deck was a really versatile one that I spent a lot of time with. It was one of my most used a few years ago. And while I still love this deck, I think it's one of the most beautiful tarot decks that we have. It's so beautiful and artistic and I love the color palette. I have not used it in probably two years. So I think it is about time that I spent some dedicated time with this deck to see if we still vibe, to see if I still love it as much as I did, to see if I still love using it as much as I used to. That's the key here. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to do several readings with this deck and I'm going to vlog that experience with you, take you through the spreads that I'm doing, the interpretations, and just my experience overall working with the Fountain Tarot. Okay, so we're here for our first reading with the Fountain Tarot. And lucky for me, Sammy Manzo actually posted a uh, spread that I thought we could give a try. It's her New Moon in Cancer spread that she just posted today. Sammy is a wonderful tarot reader and astrologer, and I will leave a link to her channel just in case you haven't heard of her. She's fabulous. I don't normally do astrology based reading, so I'm curious. I think this will be interesting. So this is a five card spread. And the first question is how can I best nurture my intentions? I got the Two of Cups. Oh, so pretty. I've always seen the Two of Cups as sort of like a mutual connection um, and sort of like a reciprocity. Like there's no imbalance or power play going on in this card. So in terms of the question and thinking about my intentions and how I can nurture those, I am definitely thinking about like balance and harmony and making sure that I'm like giving and receiving in equal measure. So in terms of my intentions, I think it's important to think about not only what I'm asking for, what I'm hoping to receive, but also what am I giving? How am I making my interactions and my connections mutually beneficial? About giving generously while maintaining healthy boundaries. About meeting people or situations as they are rather than expecting or demanding more. And I think that's reflected here in this card too, because we're not quite sure whether, you know, these people are lifting up their cups, hoping for something to be filled, like to fill those cups, or if they're offering the cups up. And I think it's because both of those things need to be true. Question number two is where am I feeling most vulnerable? I got the hanged man. Am I just gonna get the hanged man in every one of these videos? Probably. And I had it upside down too, which is 
almost appropriate for The Hanged Man. So The Hanged Man for me, as I spoke about in the last video in this series, is a bit of a significator for me in a lot of ways. It's my birth card and it's a card that I've just always loved and identified with. And it's interesting that the card is often about surrender. And here we're talking about vulnerability. Like there is so much vulnerability inherent in an act of surrender. That's sort of what makes surrender so scary. It's just how vulnerable we become in that or can be. Without getting too personal, I think that this card is definitely speaking to the fact that right now there are quite a few things in my life that I just don't have a lot of control over. And I am having to just sort of accept that I don't have any control over that and let the people who know the most and know how to handle these things, handle them. And I just have to trust that they're gonna be able to do that and that I'm gonna be okay. And that's scary and it definitely is making me feel very vulnerable. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. Question number three is how can I be my own mother? The Eight of Wands. Uh, this card is really quite obvious to me uh, what this is supposed to mean to me. Um, I think I can sometimes lack direction and motivation, sometimes. What this card is saying is very, very clear to me. Um, I am not always good at keeping myself on track, on task, on focus, um, like keeping moving towards my goals. Uh, I can just be someone who I don't know, just doesn't do those things. I get either sidetracked with other things I'm more interested in, like filming a video, or I procrastinate. By filming a video, <laughs> I feel like this card's just calling me out. So how do I mother myself? I think this is more of like a firm talking to, um, of like reminding myself that I'm responsible for my actions and that a choice to do something else is an active choice to not do the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I need to stay on task. I need to keep moving towards something that I know is important to me. And in order to sort of get to that end goal, I have to do the stuff. I have to actually work at it. So it is that firm but loving advice, I suppose, uh, that I feel like my inner mother can offer me at the moment. Number four, what areas need more optimism? Whoop, just dropped the card. I think that's our card. The emperor, the emperor. <sighs> the emperor. If you watch the first video in this series, you will know, you will know. <laughs> the emperor is one of the cards that I least identify with in the deck. It's the card that I probably had the most trouble with since I started reading tarot. And it came up for me in a big, big way in our last video. So I think this is just screaming that I need to have a lot more faith and belief and optimism in my own abilities, my own capabilities, particularly as they pertain to things like confidence, leadership, my skills and my ability to be disciplined and get shit done. And I need to sort of push myself in ways that allow me to demonstrate ability and capability and leadership to myself and sort of have an optimism that those things will work out. I won't fall flat on my face. I won't look like an idiot. I won't fail everyone and everything around me. I've got this, I can do it. And number five, what positive emotion can lead the way? I like this, I like this position. Oop. Dropped another card and I got the Eight of Cups. To me, this card is immediately sort of singing back to the Hanged Man in many ways. Like I spoke about like the fact that I don't have a lot of control over some things that are happening in my life and I do just sort of have to surrender and uh, let other people solve the problems to a large extent, not entirely, but to a large extent. And this card is just definitely reminding me of that, of sort of like letting go of expectations. And I think that there can be a freedom in that and a level of like certainty and acceptance that kind of comes with that once you've made that switch in your mind of really knowing where like my responsibilities lie and like actually what I have tangible control over and what I don't, what I sort of have to leave um, for somebody else to take care of or for another day or whatever, um, what isn't mine. And I think there is, I don't know, you can see that as sort of like this regret, this sadness of loss or of like I said, like liberation, freedom. And I think this contrasts really nicely with the Emperor and the Eight of Wands in the sense that I feel like those cards are directing me to sort of like be disciplined and committed and like take charge of the things that I can control and I should be working on. And the Hanged Man and um, the Eight of Cups are sort of reminding me of those things that aren't my burden. Um, they might affect me, but there's not a lot I can do about them. So as far as the positive emotion, I'm definitely getting the sense of acceptance um, and then also the idea of like the freedom that that can bring. But I've really enjoyed this reading. So I'm gonna be sitting with these cards for a little while, I think, cause I've, I've actually found them quite moving. So again, thank you to Sammy Manzo for the spread. 
This was a really great spread and I'm enjoying my time with the Fountain Tarot so far. Hello again, friends. I was thinking we could do a little reading today. And I mean, in these videos, I'm going to try and do, you know, different spreads, but there are also a few spreads that I just go to or a few, you know, certain card pulls that I love. Um, so you're going to see those come up again in the in these vlogs, I think. Let's do doing well, do better. What am I doing well right now? We've got the eight of wands again. Cool. And do better. Ooh. Oh, don't drop it. Justice. Interesting. I think this is just sort of like a pat on the back for me, sort of taking the advice of the last spread and getting a little bit more focused and getting a bit more momentum towards things that are actually important to me and that I need to be focusing on at the moment. So this feels like a pat on the back for like listening to the Fountain Tarot for our last reading. So the Justice card is associated with Libra, which is my sun sign. And I've always thought this is such an interesting Justice card. It almost has vibes similar to the Eight of Wands in that we've got like this such direct focus um, with the like the triangle that's almost like coming out of her mouth. It almost feels like a cone or um, like a speakerphone. But then we also have some more of the traditional symbolism of the scales there as well. Some of the keywords for justice are things like justice, fairness, uh, consequences, also balance, sometimes even objectivity. I think balance is something that comes up again and again in my life. It's almost like something I'm always having to do better at, always needing to work on. But whenever a major arcana comes up, I always try to think a little bit deeper and a little bit bigger. And so this is making me wonder where maybe I'm displaying some bias or intolerance, or maybe I'm not showing up for justice in the ways that I want to be or should be, or that maybe even my own perceptions and judgments are a bit too harsh at the moment when it comes to particular individuals or situations in my life. On a bit more of a personal note, a uh, association that I have made with justice and a few of the other cards in different situations um, is my tendency towards black and white thinking. Um, and so this card coming up is making me sort of assess whether I've fallen or slipped into that a little bit lately. Because although the idea of justice is one that I care about a lot, I do often try to remember that this card, I think in the, in the tarot at least, doesn't just represent the idea of justice, it also represents the way, you know, the systems of justice that we have. And at least in a lot of countries around the world, and I think certainly the country that I live in, the idea of restorative justice isn't at the forefront. Instead, it's very much a punitive system. Um, and that is always a fault finding system. So that's sort of my connection to it of um, like, when am I sort of like looking for wrongs and rights? When am I sort of like not seeing the nuance and the complexities in situations? When am I going to that black and white thinking? And I think that's demonstrated in this card quite well. Um, you know, with this sort of like cone, it's almost like um, it is very piercing and like this character can sort of like see the truth of a situation, but it is like a particular truth. Like it is a narrow truth. It's not all encompassing, I suppose. And I know that isn't strictly traditional and that isn't how everybody will see the justice card. Those are just some of my own personal interpretations for when I'm reading for myself. I think of tarot very much as in the way that I think of language, um, you know, a language that is static and doesn't change and evolve is a dead language and individuals will use language in ways that display their own personalities and express their own experiences and interpretations of the world um, and to deny them that is to deny any creativity and it's also to kill the language itself but then also if I were to use a word in a way that just like literally doesn't make sense then that sort of breaks the the usefulness of the language or the tool if that makes sense I don't know if that was very clear but that's sort of how I see tarot so all of that to say if you have like a, a spin on a card that works for you that resonates with you in your experience that you know you've developed um, maybe through a particular connection or something like that's okay you're allowed to have meanings for cards that aren't you know textbook anyway I like that I got the eight of wands to sort of give me a pat on the back and like it sort of feels like we're on a bit of a character arc in this video but then also that justice has given me quite a lot to think about hello friends we are back for a reading with the fountain tarot now I have a very particular thing that I'm looking for some not even guidance around but just some support I guess I experienced some discrimination, um, trying to get vaccinated. I am eligible um, because of my diagnosis of bipolar disorder. You know, this is not an uncommon experience for people with invisible illnesses, disabilities, mental illnesses, and it's not the first time that I've experienced something like this. But every time it happens, it just chips away at a little part of you. <laughs> um, and 
it makes you more scared to access the services that you need and that you deserve. These sort of experiences just sort of remind people like me <laughs> that even the spaces that should be safe for us aren't always. And you never know <laughs> when it's not going to be. Anyway, I have been issued an apology. I had, you know, the um, manager nurse or something, I've forgotten her title, contact me and, you know, we spoke for quite a while. So I'm hoping that nobody else will experience that in the same place, at least that I did. I hope that they've learned from this. Um, but I'm still feeling, I'm, I'm okay because I have such good support networks, but it still hurts. <laughs> um, and I just feel quite fragile, I suppose. I feel angry, but I also feel so sad. Something that I would have done a few years ago is do a reading, not for like an answer on what I should do, but just in terms of getting some support and uh, using this tool to support myself. So I'm sorry for the lengthy introduction. I just felt like that context was necessary for what we're gonna be doing a reading for. And so I just did a quick Google search. What I ended up finding was actually one by, um, Vix from New Age Hipster, I recognize it immediately. Her branding is so clear. Uh, it's called the Comfort and Support Spread. Now it is an eight card spread, but there's a few positions here that just don't resonate with me. And I'm sure Vix would be more than supportive of me sort of taking this as inspiration and making it work for me. So I think I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna cut out a few of these positions basically. The, the ones that don't work for me primarily are the divine masculine, divine feminine ones. So yeah, we're gonna adjust this into a five card spread that I think will work for me right now. And I'll leave a link to Vix's website. So if you're interested in finding out more about this spread and Vix, you can find that in the description box below. So the first position is the roots. What grounds me? Strength. Next, this is where we're going to sort of merge positions two and five, amend it a bit. And I'm gonna do um, the supports from the universe. Uh, just a generic, like whatever is out there, how is it supporting me right now? Look at the Queen of Swords, interesting. Position number six is the action for me to take right now. Got the Chariot, okay. The next one is the action to take to help me move through. Got the Ten of Coins. And finally, our continued self-care card. Got the Nine of Cups. So on Vix's site, which I, again, I will link below, she sort of expands on what each of the positions means. And for roots, number one, what grounds you? She says, this card can help you see how to ground back into your body, into yourself, into where you are. And so we drew strength, or I drew strength. And for me, this is, I don't know, it feels like an acknowledgement of the strength that I demonstrated in getting through what was a really difficult time and for standing up for myself. But I think in terms of right now, the message is a little bit more on the balance that the strength card so often reminds us is important. I think sometimes I can be so in danger of being swallowed by my sadness and hurt that I can swing into the other end, which is of passion and anger and advocacy and fighting for change. And so I guess this is reminding me to just sort of find that balance again um, of like, yes, advocating for myself is important. Advocating for others is important but I also need to be gentle and kind with myself and with the people around me. And that is something that takes more discipline and determination than it does just fiery energy. Uh, we don't wanna quell the fiery energy, we just wanna find a way to sort of channel it and focus it in a way that doesn't get out of hand. Then our card number two was sort of the one that was just mixing a few of our, um, Vix's positions, which was, uh, how's the universe supporting me right now? Um, and I drew the Queen of Swords. It is interesting to me the way that this card is depicted with these sort of angles, almost like obscuring the Queen from our view, but her sword is still very present and forward in the image. So I think there's an element of just like, you know, being taken care of in the background. Like, you know, maybe the angels aren't swooping to my rescue, but a reminder that like the, the truth of my situation, um, that was acknowledged um, and that sort of things are being taken care of in a way that maybe not super obvious to me. But I do think it's also an element of like maybe, I don't, I don't, I don't like to say this, I don't want to apply this to anybody else. I'm just trying to make sense of and be okay with my own situation. So please know that with the next thing I'm gonna say. I don't believe that everything happens for a reason. I don't believe that, you know, suffering happens to us because we chose it or because of, I, I don't believe that. And I think that those messages are racist, classist, ableist, all of the things. But I can also appreciate when people choose to look at their own experiences in that kind of way. 
in order to heal from them or just to be able to even accept them at all or to find strength from them in that way. And with the Queen of Swords coming up, which is kind of a card that can be quite harsh, and to me, there's there's hints of the Justice card in the Queen of Swords. And so in no way saying that what happened to me was acceptable, um, in no way saying that what happened to me is okay or excusable, I guess this is just reminding me of the lessons that I continue to learn because of the adversity that I've experienced. I don't know if I'm making any sense there. I'm very cautious and conscious of the victim blaming mentality and language that can be associated, especially in the new age circles with invisible illness and mental illness in particular. Now for my action to take right now, we drew the chariot, which is such an interesting chariot card, like the black and the white, this really stark imagery, but then the almost like the mirroring of these two, two horses going in either direction. It almost looks quite spooky, but some of the associations with the chariot are things like direction, determination, confidence. I think too, it's sort of the moment before we move into the momentum phase, if that makes sense. Like a lot of chariot cards are very stagnant. Not all, but a lot are. Um, but there's still like this potential in there. The chariot is often about harnessing those opposites in order to move forward and to begin to build that momentum, as opposed to sort of either remaining stagnant or being drawn off into different directions that you're not sh really focused or sure or not very intentional about where you're heading. Like, how do I find a resolution to this instead of just sort of being apathetic or really upset and just wallowing all of that? How do I find a way to move forward and move through? Then for the action to take to help me move through, I drew the 10 of coins. Uh, which also known as the Ten of Pentacles. A lot of Ten of Pentacles, not this one, uh, depict like a, a, quite a large family or several generations at least. This one more looks like the door or a gate um, into a large home or a state I often think of. So some of the keywords that come up with this card are often things like, I think of legacy, family, wealth, abundance. And so I'm just thinking of drawing on the resources that I have in abundance. And I think my biggest one is definitely my family. Um, that's Blair and my parents and in particular, but then also other people. I just feel very, very grateful that I have the sort of supports around me that I do. Um, and so I think this card is reminding me of just how rich I am in that sense and to make sure I'm leaning on them because it's an incredible, incredible resource that I know not everybody has and I'm so lucky that I do. And then our final position is the continued self-care card, which I think is a great position to have in a spread. And I drew the Nine of Cups, the Wish card. And this is one of the cards that I don't love in the Rider Waite Smith, uh, just because that guy looks so smug. <laughs> uh, but here it's so joyful. I do think that the Nine of Cups is a card of satisfaction and fulfillment and joy. I've spoken before about my understanding of the cup suit, um, and I know a lot of people associate cups with emotion, whereas my main keyword for the cups is connection. Um, and so, I don't know, this just makes me think of the fulfillment um, and satisfaction that comes from uh, really meaningful, reciprocal, intimate connection. It's almost like this character just has so many opportunities for that connection that he's just overwhelmed with joy. And so for me, that is what this card is reminding me of, is to make sure that I'm seeking out those opportunities for connection. I know I have many of them. We're back in lockdown in Melbourne, but I did get a message from my one of my best friends um, just before I started filming, and I haven't replied to her yet. So that is number one on my list of things to do um, when I finish filming. So I think this, this reading might end up being a little long because I got a bit emotional there. So um, thank you for making space to listen to me, uh, and I hope you enjoyed going through this reading with me. Hello friends, I am back today for another reading. I was actually going to do a reading from The Little White Book because I remembered that there was a reading called The Fountain Spread or something. Uh, yes, The Fountain Tarot Spread, uh, which I thought, you know, would be a good thing for us to do together. However, as much as I think this is a great little white book, I'm not all that interested in this spread, to be honest. Instead, what I was thinking is because the Emperor has been coming up for me quite a bit lately and because we know um, I have my fair share of resistance to the Emperor as a card, but then also more specifically the, the messages it gives me. Because that card's been coming up for me a lot, I did find, I just Googled and I found a website called Mantis Tarot and they have a spread, um, this one, I'll leave a link to it below, 
It's called the Foundations of Number Four Spread. It sort of explores the key themes of the number four, um, which are relevant to the emperor. So the first card is the structure. What in my life could benefit from order and blissful discipline at this time? And I drew the three of wands. The next question is the stability. What parts of myself or my life are seeking to be stabilized? Oop. Okay, dropped a card. Got the Ten of Pentacles again, right. Next is the power. Where am I being asked to step into my personal power? So I sort of got two cards for this. Um, I got the, <laughs> I got the Four of Swords, but I also got the Two of Cups, um, which another recurring card, goodness. And then the pause, where am I being invited to pause, rest and recuperate? Got the Magician. Okay, so the Three of Wands is interesting because uh, I do think that this is sort of a card about planning in a lot of, lot of ways or like thinking forward, sort of like imagining possibilities and then making plans or taking steps to move towards those. I also feel like this card often represents that moment that you've committed to a decision, <laughs> um, even if you're not quite sure like how you're going to get to the final product or the outcome. It's sort of like the, the moment where you've like decided that that's the direction you're heading in at the very least, which is definitely a big step in and of itself. It can often be the scariest or most difficult part um, of a journey, uh, but it's definitely not the finish line itself. Having said that though, I don't really, I can't really tell what's going on here. <laughs> um, it looks like a guy with a rope. Um, and that's about as far as I get. I don't really understand what this image is doing, to be honest. So I don't know if we've had a look at the guidebook yet in this video, let's do that. So we get a keyword or sort of a title, which is focused effort. And then it says, in the three of wands, a man exerts great effort to manifest his objectives. At times he must push energy outwards to shape his life. And at other times he must pull energy inward to harness its power and attract what he wants. Your strength and focus are producing the first glimpses of achievement. But the secret to your long-term prosperity lies in your ability to be patient, attentive, and most of all, nimble. And then we have some keywords for meaning, which is focused effort, strength, foresight, business acumen, common sense, dedication, success. Sort of like this guy in this card, he kind of knows what he wants, but he has a lot of work to do to still get there, I guess. Um, and he is being very active and proactive in making sure he achieves those outcomes um, of getting what he wants. I don't know if I'm always doing that as well as I could be or should be. And then our next card for where in my life I need more stability, we've got the 10 of coins. And this is a recurring card for me in this video so far. And it's sort of funny that this card in itself can often mean stability in so many ways, um, especially when it comes to family life and finances. And I don't, I'm not really sure exactly where, like nothing stands out to me very strongly um, with those sort of themes as to where I'm feeling particularly rocky or anything um, but I suppose those are things that can always you know can always do with some more consideration and some more intention around I guess and perhaps in particular more my like long-term goals with those things I'm not much of a long-term goal thinker to be perfectly honest so I suppose as, as it pertains to family and finances I think maybe those are things that I need to think a little bit more long term about and sort of consider what I want for the future for those things how do I nurture them and not take them for granted just because things are pretty good at the moment I guess then it was the power where am I being asked to step into my personal power and with the two of cups coming up again I think this is interesting because I was saying uh, earlier how I think this card is so much about like the reciprocity and like mutually beneficial relationships and connections and I suppose this is making me also think of being sure that I'm not confusing subservience with generosity, not confusing um, sort of like accommodating people to an unhealthy extent with being generous and all of that sort of stuff. So I don't know, those sort of like lines maybe I need to reconsider with a couple of people um, in my life. Just strong personal boundaries, I guess. And just ensuring that those things are like relevant, up to date <laughs> um, and healthy. For everybody involved. Then the Four of Swords is another card that is it's sort of making me think of boundaries in terms of um, ensuring that uh, I give myself permission and space to sort of recuperate as and when I need to um, and not being apologetic about that. Sort of making sure that I'm not just like available <laughs> all the time for everyone and anyone. Um, making sure that I sort of like carve that space out for myself. 
And I think it does take a level of confidence and self-assuredness to be able to declare uh, those needs unapologetically and to, and to make that space and time for yourself. Just being able to say no to stuff when I want or need to, I guess, is what I'm getting from that card. Especially when it connects to the Two of Cups in that way. When two cards come up together, sometimes I read them separately, like as two different answers. Other times I feel like they're connected and here I feel like they are, like they, they make sense to me connecting as to, you know, like how much I'm giving in relationships um, and how I'm participating in relationships or in connections with other people generally. And then sort of ironic that the magician comes up in our position for pause uh, because in some ways the magician sort of does remind me of the emperor, not entirely, but in terms of like confidence and sort of like dedication and skill, like there are elements there. And the magician is one of those cards that has a lot of different connotations depending on who you ask and the deck. Um, sometimes it is about skill. It can also be about like imagination and magic, obviously. Uh, it also has like more historical connotations of like trickery as well. Other times it's about creativity and all of those things can be interconnected, but depending on like where people focus, I guess. The sort of more um, philosophical ideas of will, like will with a capital W in many circles, uh, I think this card also speaks to quite a lot too, um, like willpower. Um, and uh, like purpose in life and um, how we go about sort of using the tools and skills that we've been given or that we've developed um, in order to achieve our outcomes. So I don't think this card is telling me to pause on developing skills and creativity. Um, maybe where I'm going more with this is on like starting new stuff. Uh, maybe I need to sort of chill on taking on new stuff and I just need to focus on sort of the, the things that I've already got up in the air, the things I'm already working on. Instead of being a jack of all trades, sort of like try and, I don't know, dedicate myself to a few chosen things a little bit more often, I suppose. And in terms of the Emperor and like getting some more of the lessons from the Emperor, um, not all of these cards scream like Emperor material to me. So that's interesting. Um, I do think though that like the Three of Wands and sort of like thinking more about like, and the Ten of Coins, to be honest, too, like thinking more about like the future and uh, like my actual goals for the future and sort of the things and steps I need to take to head in the right direction at the very least or set myself up in the right way. Then the Four of Swords and the Two of Cups both coming up in the same position. I do feel that these very much represent boundaries um, in terms of work and relationships, um, both like boundaries in like immediate like exchanges with people but also in ensuring that I'm setting boundaries for myself in terms of what I'm taking on what I'm doing and making sure I have enough space to say no um, to projects to people um, and giving myself the space that I need to chill and just take care of myself in the way that I need to and I guess I just need to be a little bit more upfront um, and proactive about those things and maybe a little less lenient in those areas as well. Stop trying to be everything to everyone and do a million different things and instead just try and do the things that are important to me and that I've decided are worth my time and energy. I've been more the person who dabbles, but maybe I'm sort of being redirected to get more focused, I guess. So this was a really interesting and productive reading, a very thought provoking one. Um, I'm glad I found that spread. So we have come to the end of our couple of weeks spending some quality time with the Fountain Tarot. And now I've just got to tell you what I think and whether I want to keep the deck. I have some sort of conflicted feelings about this deck overall. Um, I think it's beautiful. I really enjoy reading with it. I think you can tell throughout this video that it just has really flowed for me. I think in part that is just my familiarity with it. I've had this deck a long time and I really like it. I enjoy the artwork. I think for the most part, the way that the cards have like been depicted and the sort of like the, the, the choice in terms of the symbolism and the artwork and like the positions of the bodies and all of that just really works for me and how I think about tarot. And although we didn't use it a whole lot in this uh, video, I do think the little white book is a fabulous one. Considering you only get like a couple of sentences for each card, you get so much. Like I think again, with the artwork being so intentional and specific, I think they've managed to achieve that same sort of feeling in the guidebook. Everything is so deliberately worded and I think it's wonderful. I think overall in terms of the symbolism and the choices made in representing the meanings of the cards and sort of getting to the core of each meaning without just replicating artwork that we've already seen um, or s symbolism that we've already seen, you know, exactly. They've created a very thoughtful, modern, 
updated deck that doesn't feel derivative. Having said that, this deck does not depict a huge amount of diversity. Uh, there are a few people of color here, not a lot, uh, and there's certainly not a lot of age diversity and there's really no diversity in terms of body types and disabilities and that sort of stuff. I don't feel like the artist was leaning on like fetishization or stereotypes or anything like that. It's more just like the fact that the vast majority of this deck is white and I wanted to like blatantly explicitly acknowledge that in this video. It is also a deck that I already have in my collection and that I have enjoyed reading with. Ultimately I will be keeping this deck because I do think I, I find it a very easy deck to read with and I enjoy reading with it. Uh, and I don't think I really have another deck that quite feels like this one. In terms of the artwork specifically, I don't have a lot of like this very sort of contemporary um, art style. And then also just, it has a certain feeling to it. It feels very like neutral. Um, it has like at once this watery and airy quality to it that I just, I really appreciate. And I find very sort of, soothing and calming but it also feels very like specific and brings a lot of clarity to situations and I don't know how it came across in the video but for me at least I feel like the readings I was doing the last month or so uh, really just flowed and worked well and gave me a lot of food for thought um, like supported me where I needed it but also pushed me where I needed it and I just really enjoyed my time with the deck. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, our second round of Keep or Cull. I really enjoyed sharing these readings with you and walking through these cards and exploring this deck with you. And of course, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for all of your support of me and my content. And an especially big thank you goes to my high tier patrons, uh, Livia, Lynette Brown, and Laurie. Thank you so much. But that is more than enough rambling from me for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week in a new video and in a month or so with our third installment of the Keep or Cull series. Until then, so much love. Bye.